Okay, here I am going to make a quick 10 to 15 minute video here to replace the previous version of this video, which my lovely friends told me 37 minutes of me talking um, was just too much for them. So here we go with another video. So this is my solar power system that is totally portable uh, and that I use to power that thing right there, which is a battery hog. Um, I have a brand new battery in there that I had installed this year and I only get about an hour and a half of charge on it. And I like to come out here and do uh, my work out here uh, in our state parks here in Colorado. I like to hang out in the national forests. I did about 12,000 miles of road tripping this past year. And uh, it's just nice to be able to have power on the road, not only for that thing, but for, uh, you know, girly things like uh, using a hairdryer and uh, a flat iron so that you look presentable even though you're out and about and on the road. Um, so I created this system uh, mainly because of that, but uh, it has become a really good uh, system that I use um, uh, when I'm camping and I've helped other people uh, who needed power while they were out and about. Um, and then also too, you get to, uh, you know, jumpstart people's cars and dark parking lots <laughs> when that's necessary. So um, let me first start with uh, that solar panel. Um, it's a 50 watt solar panel with uh, the two uh, MC4 type connectors. There's a positive and a negative connector on there. Um, the power station is a Schumacher. Um, I believe the model number is an SJ1 portable power station 1200 amp and you can see it has a light on there. Um, that's an LED light that uh, is very helpful in dark situations. There's battery cables on the back there so you can charge a car battery. There is a uh, air compressor on here. And if I can get this little cord out, you can see this is the um, how you can fill up your tires because it also has an air compressor on here. And one of the other ways that you can charge this thing, you can see this cable that I have just attached around the handle there. This is a 12 volt male to male connector. It allows you to plug into the 12 volt port on the front of the box, which is right here. Um, and then you put the other end of that connector in a vehicle a uh, cigarette lighter and you can charge it when you're driving your car. I don't like to charge it when the car uh, is just sitting because I don't want it draining the battery. Um, but uh, yeah, that's another way of charging it. So then the other way to charge it is via this little guy right here. And what you do is you plug this into a um, I use a heavy duty extension cord, the kind that you use for construction work and power tools. Uh, I had another extension cord on there that was a smaller, thinner one, but it got really hot um, and I was worried about uh, fire. So I didn't want to catch my house on fire. Um, and so I changed over to a heavy duty one. Um, and then you just plug that heavy duty extension cord into the wall in your house. And when you do that, when you use this method of charging, um, this box has a charge controller on it that engages so that you don't overcharge the AGM type battery that's in here. Um, and because of that charge controller, it regulates uh, the speed at which your uh, battery charges. And so it takes about 48 hours to fully charge this thing, no matter what that number is reading at. Um, and that number is the percentage 
of juice that your battery has in it currently. And right now this isn't plugged into anything. So it's telling me that we have 64% charge on the battery. Um, and in order to uh, get more juice in there, we obviously want to plug it in to the solar panel. Uh, so very quickly, when I bought the solar panel, I was not aware that there are various different types of connectors on a solar panel. I didn't know uh, that when I ordered the 12 volt charging cable, that when it came, it was gonna have this type of a connector on it. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, this is called an SAE connector. And uh, that connector obviously isn't going to connect to um, those MC4 connectors. This cable that I bought came in a kit and it had these other two types of connectors. So it's got the SAE on one end. This one has the battery clamps. And I believe that this is used to uh, connect an SAE type solar panel straight to a 12 volt battery to charge it. Um, don't quote me on that, but I think that's what it's for. <laughs> um, and then this one has the SAE connector with uh, just an open uh, 12 volt port. So, um, that's what I had and I didn't know how, when it, when it arrived in the mail and I saw, ooh, as this is a different type of connector than the one that's on my solar panel, what am I gonna do? And I started looking around and I found that there is this, which is an adapter cable. So it's got the SAE uh, connector on one end and the two MC4 connectors on the other end. And you can see there's a negative and a positive uh, side to those. Um, also, when I bought that, uh, I didn't think I was going to need these tools, although I kept seeing them on Amazon popping up when I bought this and also when I bought this. Uh, but it turned out that in order to get this to connect to those, that I actually needed those. <laughs> so you, you do have to order these little tools and they come in a, a kit. Um, you can order them individually, but I highly recommend buying them in the kit with both of them because I actually needed both of them uh, to get my connectors apart, um, to loosen them up. Uh, so um, now what I'm going to do is show you how this all connects together. It's so quick and easy. It's really great. All right. Okay. Here we are with the MC4 connectors that connect straight to um, the solar panel. And here is the MC4 adapter cable. And I'm just going to pop these in like that. And like that. They go negative to positive, negative to positive. And you can see this one's a little tight still. Um, sometimes I have a little problem getting that side together, but there it is. So those two are now connected. Now all I have to do is take the two uh, SAE connectors and connect those to one another. Like so. And now all I have to do is take this 12 volt end of the SAE adapter cable and plug it in to the 12 volt port here. And all I have to do is use my right hand because I'm right handed. <laughs> Hold on. Ooh. And get that plugged in. So now that's plugged in. And if I toss this out into the cloudy sun, it's just laying on the ground there. Now that's one of the things I like about these uh, solar panels also is that they're lightweight. Uh, that thing weighs about a pound and a half. Uh, it's very easy to stow in my car. I do keep it covered when it's in the car because I don't want any charge escaping from the cable. I don't know if it'll actually do that, but I don't want it to set my car on fire. So uh, this thing is now plugged in and you can see 
the number has already gone up in cloudy weather from 64% to 68. Now, in order to use my laptop, I'm going to use the AC plug here and I'm going to plug in my power strip, which you can see is right there. And my MacBook is already plugged into it. It is turned on. And when I open up my computer and wake it from its sleepy sleep mode, you can see that number went from 68 to 54 to 50. <laughs> because she's a pig. She eats all the juice. Um, and so now it's going down to 45. And uh, I've run this thing down to about 31%. Um, and quite honestly, it has never given me a problem uh, with the recharge um, or uh, I guess the thing is like if you run down an AGM battery too much, you can damage it, uh, I think. I'm not really sure. I have kids playing with my dog. Um, and uh, if you overcharge an AGM battery, you can also do damage to it, is my understanding. Which is why, typically, what you want is a solar charge controller to manage the amount of charge between the solar panel and the battery that you're charging. Um, and because that 12 volt uh, connection, um, the the charge controller that's in the box does not engage when that 12 volt plug is being used. So there is a danger of overcharging this battery by charging it uh, using this method. Um, so far that has not been a problem for me either. Uh, my 50 watt panel is never really going to pull enough juice to overcharge this thing, probably. Um, and I just have to keep an eye on the digital display uh, numbers in order to, um, you know, just keep an eye on that. I'm not completely convinced that that digital display, uh, the, ch the charge controller that runs that digital display is actually very accurate. Um, just because I've seen it do some really weird stuff before um, that I can't really quite explain or put my finger on. It just does these, you know, weird dips and jumps when there's not even anything plugged into it and when it's not plugged into anything to charge it. So um, I'm not really sure what that's about. That's the only issue of reliability that I've had with this um, power station. And it's only an issue because I'm questioning it. <laughs> like, I don't know that it's actually even really an issue. Um, so, uh, but this is my system and it's been a really great system and it charges that thing and lets me do all kinds of other stuff when I'm out camping and uh, on the road and need to dry my hair with a hair dryer, um, <laughs> you know, and charge phones and tablets and, uh, you know, jumpstart cars and fill up car tires. Uh, I have used every function and feature of this box numerous times over about the past four months. And uh, what I have found is that it has been absolutely reliable uh, for every single thing that I have used it for. And so I really like it. I love that it's portable. I'm not sure of the weight of the box itself. It's probably maybe about uh, somewhere. Be it's more than 10 pounds. It might be 15 pounds on the box. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not terribly heavy and it stows in the boot of my tiny car, which is why I needed a portable system that I could take with me um, because I go car camping in that thing. And uh, I have to have every bit of usable space available to me uh, in that car for the things that I really need. And so, um, you know, I've learned how to pack light 
Uh, I've created a portable camp kitchen that fits in a uh, 12 inch uh, by 24 inch by 24 inch bag. Uh, it's a heavy duty bag that came from Best Top. I hate to mention that name because I used to work for those bastards, but uh, it is a great bag. Uh, it was uh, designed uh, for aftermarket use by uh, my friend who still works there. And uh, uh, it was one of the sample bags that was uh, given to me um, before I was no longer working there. <laughs> so uh, I've had it for many, many years and uh, it has really held up. It's a heavy duty off-road type bag and uh, so now it's my portable camp kitchen and I will make a video about that but it fits in that car um, and it fits in there right next to this thing the solar panel stows right behind my seat and um, the whole system is just portable really dependable you can see even in the gray cloudy skies that uh, that charge is holding at 50%, even though my computer is plugged in and pulling a charge uh, from the power station. So if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and then hit the bell next to the subscribe button because I'm going to be making additional videos on nomad life and how you can power all your goodies and devices, including your sewing machines on the road. I have doggy thing happening here. <laughs> as happens in the outdoors and in the wild uh, with your vicious beasts. So um, yeah, uh, I'll be making a video about how I run my uh, embroidery sewing machine on the road using this thing as well. So have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye.